Hand hygiene. What could be simpler than washing your hands? That's what the public thinks. Uh, that's what a lot of our stakeholders think. Just do it. Just wash your hands. Well, it turns out that when you measure carefully and when you look for the specific causes of, this, of why this process fails, it turns out not to be simple at all. So here are some examples of the top five reasons that hand hygiene failed in those organizations. One of the top ones was we stopped really paying attention to it because our data told us that we were at 95%. Well, when you measure carefully what this group of organizations found is that they weren't at 90%, they were at 48% collectively. We still have places where it's not easy to get the soap or the, or the alcohol hand rub. Uh, here's another one. Every one of these organizations had a very, what they thought was a very thorough training program for every kind of caregiver exactly when they should wash their hands. What they found when they peeled the onion back here is gaps in that training program. So for example, a housekeeper knew that when he or she went into a patient room and they were going to have contact with the patient, they'd have to wash their hands. But a lot of them said, well, if I'm going into the room but I'm not going to have contact with the patient, I don't have to wash my hands. I've got my gloves on, so I'll go in and do what I have to do, I'll clean the surface, change a garbage can, collect something else, and I don't have to wash my hands, and I'm going into the next room, same gloves, I don't have to wash my hands, I'm doing the same thing, room after room after room, contaminating each one, one to the other, gaps in training programs. Now, I won't go through this whole long list. The point here is that of about 20 or 25 very specific causes, every one of them requires a different intervention to get rid of. So how do you know how to improve your hand hygiene program unless you know which causes you are trying to get rid of? And in fact, what we know also from this work and lots of other work is that the causes differ from one hospital to another. So each of the rows on that chart is one of the top 10 causes. Each of the columns with the letters is one hospital, one of the eight that participated with us in this initial project. And you can see from the distribution of X's that the same package of interventions that would work, for example, in hospital A would have almost no impact on hospital F. Customizing the package of interventions based on this systematic assessment of what your causes are is critical to the effective spread of good interventions and quality improvement. So as I said, the, our goal here is to spread this learning without having to charge a lot of money for it and to benefit our accredited organizations. And we are doing that by our surveyors communicating exactly where to find the work of the center when they find a problem, in this case with hand hygiene. The hospital can go to a web tool that they'll have access to that will walk them through without any, having to know anything about uh, the Lean or Six Sigma tools that generated the information, how to measure, how to find its own causes, how to find the solutions. And this tool allows each hospital who comes to it to customize a package of interventions that will work, that's proven already in the center and the pilot hospitals that we use after the center gets done, target solutions to its own causes. And so we're actually calling it the Targeted Solutions Tool, or TST, you gotta have an acronym. And we will be talking about this and spreading this learning with each of these projects over a wide range of different communication vehicles. So in the future, maybe, we'll have payment incentives that are aligned with all of these effective strategies. Uh, we will have uh, integrative strategies and incentives that will allow different parts of the delivery system to come together to achieve these goals.